Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termal, and this 200th King of the Poppers video is going to recap what I've been doing for the last five months while I've been off the air. Uh, court stuff, uh, the CRTC case at the Supreme Court of Canada over the right to participate in debates, uh, Jim Turner, the non-inmate whose appeal was run under the inmate rules, um, Parker, the court's trying to get him to go civil, but we had a big win in Windsor where a guy had his marijuana charges withdrawn after using the Polkoa defense and he wasn't even sick. And of course I've spent some time doing posts on the swine flu hoax and the climate gate hoax and uh, politically on the hustings. Well, since St. Paul, I ran in Hoshalaga, Toronto Center last month, Ottawa West Nepean next month. And finally, the big story was the Dragon's Den finally put on my Can Let's Time Bank bitch. And they did such a misrepresentation that I sued them for defamation. They chopped my 17-minute pitch down to one and made it look like they'd slap me around instead of the truth was that I'd slap them around. So, here's the recap. And then after that, we'll do more in-depth stories. Okay, so I'll start with the good news first. In November 23rd, I believe, Ken Surgent in Windsor, who filed a Polkoa motion to declare that the law was still dead, had his charges withdrawn, and he wasn't even sick. So as we've said, we've been reinforced by the Svetkopoulos decision last year, which said that the MMAR has been flawed for the last six years, like it had been flawed during the Parker two years. So the government scared me, withdrew those charges. And since then, we've had four, five, six different people file more per POCOA applications to prohibit their charges, and we're seeing what's happening real soon. MedPot Discuss has most of the things happening there. Um, while the uh, next was the uh, case of Jim Turner, the inmate who was dragged through, the non inmate who was dragged through the inmate court. And he appealed to the Supreme Court of Canada, and James Earl Turner lost his case. And whether the Court of Appeal erred by applying rules that govern inmate appeals when Jim wasn't an inmate. Whether the Court of Appeal erred by dismissing an inmate's application for leave to appeal when no inmate application for leave to appeal had been filed by a non-inmate applicant. So basically, the court said there was no error in calling it an inmate appeal, even though it wasn't, and treating the guy like an inmate, even though he wasn't, and that's Justices Binney, Fish, and Shadow, Supreme Court of Canada. Well, anyway, he's filed an application for reconsideration. If you go see the case docket, you'll see that it's still going on, because this is pretty important, dragging a non-inmate through inmate court. Send my case at the Supreme Court of Canada on the CRTC decision that basically said the Ontario Court of Appeal decision in Vezina rules that found Rogers did not breach the broadcasting requirements set out in Section 27 of the regulations that he be treated equitably because the provision does not apply to debate programs. Therefore, it was within Rogers' discretion to exclude participants from the debate. Supreme Court of Canada, Justice McLaughlin, Abella, Rothstein, it's now official. Rogers may exclude candidates from the debate. So that's why in St. Paul, I was on the CPAC Dale Goldhawk show. But in this last Toronto Center by-election, I ran in that it was the 4th of February, the by-election in Toronto. I wasn't allowed on the show that time. I could call in for a minute. So, again, they now make use of this. Media don't have to let people participate in debates anymore. It's official, and most people don't know that their voters' right to hear everybody is gone. Well, Terry Parker's case to try and get his med medical marijuana pot back after Canada Post seized it, gave it to the police, is now at the Ontario Court of Appeal, and the Crown has made an application to have his case treated as a civil application for the return of his criminal pot. And, of course, we're going to resist that, and that will be an interesting case coming up. So that's the court stuff. Finally, we're 
During the five months I was off, I spent some time commenting on the swine flu hoax. And I hope they do stats to see the different death rates between the people who took the shot and the people who didn't. And, of course, the climate gate hoax that most people aren't even aware of. Here is the greatest hoax scam in world history. How they scammed us into believing that the temperature's been getting catastrophically warmer when they actually had a trick to hide the decline in temperature for the past 10 years. Man-made global warming is a farce. We don't have to pay the carbon taxes. We don't have to stop using coal. In other words, cheap energy is available again. Best news I've heard of in the last decade, millennium. Greatest news, climate gate. And because the media didn't talk about it, 99% of the people seem not to know. Finally, Dragon's Den. Yes, I was on the Dragon's Den. And if you go to their cbc.ca slash Dragon's Den site and you click on the pitches, you'll see my pitch. And there it is, defined as Ken Let's Time Bank. Picture John Turmel, hometown Brantford, ask 100K for a 10% royalty. Description, this Brantford, Ontario man plans to overhaul the Canadian banking system by switching from cash to chips. Bullshit, not true, but the rest of it is. So anyway, this is a picture they sent me of the actual show when I was on it. And up close, you can see how really turned off these people are as I'm hitting them with my best line. It's when I show the poker chips and the coins and say, how come the coins inflate and the poker chips do not? Hardware is the same. Inflation must be a software problem. And most people find that interesting when they're witty, but these people were all boom, boom, boom. Then when they jumped all over me, I jumped back. Now remember, I told you I'd slap these people around so badly told the Brett Wilson, the you know, junior engineer, to put his money where his mouth was. And when he had to back down from my $500 bet, I hit him with my coup de grace, flash the cash, bye-bye trash. And I even bet the producer 10 bucks they wouldn't dare show that. Well, January 13th, here it is on TV, they're going to show it. All of a sudden, near the end of the show, I walk on one minute. They say, John Turmel wants to change the Canadian banking system from cash to chips. And then one guy says, yeah, yeah, it's like blowing air up a dead horse's ass. Well, that's what the, you know, the guy who owns Boston Pizza knows about. You know, and they made fun of me and threw me off in one minute. Such a misrepresentation, they didn't even mention Brantford dollars, Toronto dollars, 10% pitch. And because they didn't mention my pitch at all, that gave me a cause of action. So I sued them. Took out a statement of claim in the Superior Court of Ontario here in Brantford, saying that the deal was they would present my pitch for the 10% premium on the Brantford dollar system, and they didn't deliver. Because nowhere in that one minute did they mention the pitch for the Brantford dollars. Well, I've been going over to the forum at the Dragon's Den site and kicking ass over there with their defenders, trying to defend their heroes, you know. Anyway, if you want to follow that interesting story, just pop over to the cbc.ca slash Dragon's Den. Click on forum, general discussion, see what's happening. So that case is going to go on, and I'm only hoping that they try and get it thrown out as frivolous and vexatious, because I'll say to the judge, Your Honor, take a look at the 17-minute tape, take a look at the one minute they did, and you tell me if you don't think I have a possible action here. Well, remember, I got six grand out of Nancy Wilson when she shot her fat mouth off 25 years ago, and... I don't know what they're going to offer me to try and shut this up now, but now I've got five multimillionaires on the hook, ashamed of what they've done. And like I said, all they had to do was present me saying 10% for a Brantford dollars and then have them going, no, 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 and I'd have had no cause of action. But by misrepresenting it as wanting to change Canada's coinage to chips, which was an example, it wasn't what I wanted to do, it wasn't a pitch at all, they misrepresented my pitch. They breached the contract. And now, by going through the courts, I'm going to get my hands on that videotape. So you tell me who you think is the guy who did the slapping around. Them slapping me around who don't want to show the tape or me slapping them around who's trying to get the tape to show it to you. 
So that's coming up too. Anyway, I may not have been on the video end of the world, but I have been busy. And if you want to go follow what I've been doing, the best way, I suppose, is to go to my Facebook page, facebook.com slash john.termel. And there you'll be able to see, at least for the last month and a half, everything I've been doing. I've been logging on that board over there. So gives you an idea of what my life is like. There are probably 600 different comments in the last six weeks. So uh, if you want to keep up on the wars I'm doing on a daily basis, you, it's the only place. There's my new log. I haven't got time to blog to my thing of what I'm doing. I can only, every time I do a comment, relay it over to my Facebook wall for those who want to find out what's going on. Thanks. Bye.